do we have somebody whose progesterone maybe is still okay, but they're estrogen dominant? So maybe they're not in perimenopause yet. Maybe they're just estrogen dominant. Or do we have both? Do we, you know, do we have someone who's coming in estrogen dominant and their progesterone starts to drop and now they've got a big gap here between, you know, those hormone levels and, and you need to address both those things. So then we might support their progesterone as well as supporting some estrogen detox, you know, supporting their liver so that they can normalize those estrogen levels. I love that you brought up the detox part because I feel like this isn't talked about as much mm -hmm. in the perimenopause and menopause movement. People are talking about, oh, hormones, 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 but we're not talking about how they break down and us excreting them. Another piece, too, is fascia. So if our fascia is restricted, our lymphatic system that flows through it can't move as freely. And then if our estrogen and progesterone are declining, it, it limits that resiliency mm -hmm. in that too. From a PT perspective, mm -hmm. you know, I'm talking to people about their fascia and understanding hydration and movement, even if it doesn't feel like it's much, just even just walking 10 minutes a day, even if you're like, I didn't want to do anything today, just move 10 minutes because mm -hmm. it's helping pump that lymph through the body and help the body detox. Mm -hmm.